From 2002 to 2022, John Cena has showed us all why he is one of the greatest pro wrestlers of our generation, if not the greatest pro wrestler of our generation. As one can expect, he has had to face a lot of criticism along the way to becoming a multi-million dollar main event act for the WWE and one that has transcended the wrestling world to becoming a certified hit in Hollywood. I'm Kevin and today we take a look at the highs and the lows of John Cena. Low almost getting fired. John Cena made his WWE debut in June of 2002, answering an open challenge from Kurt Angle. He had a tremendous showing against the Olympic gold medalist and even got endorsed by The Undertaker backstage on the same SmackDown. However, Cena initially failed to live up to that incredible introduction and turns out having ruthless aggression was not enough. His character simply didn't resonate with fans as he got going in his WWE career he was almost at the risk of getting released in November of 2002. With his days seemingly numbered, John Cena decided to freestyle rap with Rikishi and Rey Mysterio. Fortunately for him, Stephanie McMahon overheard this and was quite impressed. She asked Cena could he make it a part of his on-screen character, and thus the Doctor of Thugonomics was born. The rest, as they say, is history. Hi, a Royal Rumble miracle. John Cena spectacularly rose up the card during the Ruthless Aggression era, eventually becoming the face of the WWE along the way. He enjoyed multiple WWE Championship reigns, including one that lasted over a year. It was cut short in October of 2007 when Cena suffered a torn pectoral injury that looked to set him out of that year's WrestleMania season in 2008. While everyone predicted that he wouldn't be back until after WrestleMania 24, Super Cena made a shocking comeback within half of the expected recovery time, entering the Royal Rumble as a surprise number 30 entrant. The entire Madison Square Garden was stunned by the return. Hey, Triple H, pick up your jaw, you left it on the floor. John Cena eliminated the game in the final moments of that Rumble and punched his ticket to the Showcase of the Immortals. To this date, it is one of the biggest surprises in Royal Rumble history. Low. The Nexus debacle. Cena was very much on top of the WWE in 2010 as the company prepared to create new stars underneath him. Enter Wade Barrett and the Nexus. This group of rookies took WWE by storm, constantly attacking some of the most beloved superstars. From Cena to Bret Hart and even Vince McMahon. The Nexus was going to be the next big thing. They're going to destroy everything. An invasion. We want invasions. They're going to be main eventers in W. Are you sure about that? Never mind. SummerSlam. 2010 spelled the beginning of the end for the black and yellow faction. Barrett and company faced Team WWE, which was captained by Mr. Hustle Loyalty and Respect himself. And guess what? Cena came out on top after suffering from a two-on-one advantage and taking a DDT on the concrete on the outside of the ring. Yeah, that nearly ended Ricky the Dragon's steamboat, but not old Johnny Boy. What should have been the first of many big wins for Wade Barrett and his group ended with him tapping out to the SD that's right, he tapped out. It didn't end there. Cena was forced to join the Nexus as part of a stipulation and broke it from the inside out and literally buried Barrett under a bunch of chairs at the tables, ladders, and chairs pay-per-view. Although they are just rumors, many believe that Cena used his backstage clout to bury the Nexus, which paved the way for Cena and his golden shovel memes. <sighs> People in your memes, they're not reality, they're just your opinions. Low, money in the bank failure. 2012 was the worst year of John Cena's career in the eyes of some members of the C Nation. He said it himself. I mean, he was feuding with John Laurinaitis of all people. It may have started with the rock bottom at WrestleMania 28, but Cena truly hit rock bottom in July. At the namesake pay-per-view, he won the Raw Money in the Bank ladder match, but he didn't even get to unhook the briefcase. Instead, the hook broke as John smashed it into the big show. That was a disappointment. The face of the WWE further faced humiliation when he became the first person in the history of the company to fail in his Money in the Bank cash-in. Cena announced he would do so a week in advance, setting up a big WWE title main event against CM Punk on the 1000th episode of Monday Night Raw. But the big show ran in and ruined the match, ending it in a disqualification. Cena had a bucket load of historic moments in his WWE career, but uh, this is one I don't think you can consider historic. 
Here's a big high, tying the record. Speaking of John Cena's most historic moments, this is probably the best of the lot. The biggest testament of his consistency as one of the highest performing WWE superstars of all time is Cena's ridiculous world title count. He won his first championship in 2005 and never looked back. He won his 15th world championship in June 2014 and went over two and a half years without one, which would have equaled Rick Flair's momentous 16-time world title record. That makes the culmination of his chase of AJ Styles in the WWE Championship all the sweeter. Heading into Royal Rumble 2017, Cena had lost multiple single matches to the Phenomenal One. He had to wrestle the match of his life to win that sweet big gold number 16. And oh boy, he really did. The Hollywood star and future peacemaker put on a performance for a lifetime to eke out a monumental victory out of the P1 who was also at the peak of his career. It took four, yes, four attitude adjustments to get it done. The emotion was visible on John Cena's face as he took his place as one of the greatest world champions in WWE history. Now let's get 17 and break that record, shall we? If you like this video, if you have your own John Cena high and low moments, get into the comments below.